Hello, my name is Matt Alamang, and I would like to thank the SAGES Committee for the opportunity to present on how to do a better, safer polypectomy. During this talk, we'll be covering the instrumentation and issues with a standard polypectomy in both terms of diminutive or small polyps as well as large pedunculated polyps. Thankfully, the complication rate for colonoscopy has been relatively low over the last couple of decades, with the post polypectomy rates being approximately one out of a thousand causing a perforation and one out of a hundred causing significant bleeding. And these trends have remained relatively stable with the rate of perforation remaining unchanged and the rate of bleeding only decreasing slightly but not significantly over the last 10 to 15 years. It's been known for a while there's a correlation with the size of the polyp as well as the histological subtypes and relative degree of dysplasia involved. But the entire point of polypectomy is to prevent cancer. And we find in this large study of over 9,000 participants with adenomas, that most of the cancers are from missed lesions, though an estimated 20% are from incomplete resection of polyps. It's right to believe that we as endoscopists are part of the problem. And in this study in 2013, they looked at 11 gastroenterologists and their incomplete resection rate was closer to 10% on average with the main risk factors of being larger polyps or sessile serrated polyps. And looking more specifically down at the five endoscopists that had more than 20 polypectomies in the study, there was a continued wide variety in incomplete resection rate ranging from 6% to upwards of 23%. In terms of size determination, there are some graduated catheters available on the market, but the most common ways have to do with using tools that we use on a daily basis during colonoscopy with the diameter of a forceps being about two millimeters and an open forceps being about seven millimeters. The sheaths for the snares are approximately 2.4 millimeters with corresponding snare diameters based on the manufacturer's specifications. And when we're talking about the day-to-day -day work in colonoscopy, we'll find that most of the polyps are going to be less than a centimeter in size, the most common being tubular adenomas or hyperplastic polyps. So it would make sense that all of the randomized trials have to do with these smaller polyps. And we'll be going over uh, the different tools that are possible to use and why you may prefer to choose one of these tools over another. To start off with, hot biopsy forceps should never be used for polypectomies. This is for reasons of inadequate uh, polypectomy specimens, uh, injury to the uh, collected tissue, as well as the potential for thermal injury to the patient in the way of post polypectomy syndrome and full thickness burn potential. Looking at the only randomized controlled trial comparing cold forceps and jumbo forceps for smaller polyps. You can see on the left figure, the complete eradication of forceps bites with a single bite is better for a jumbo than the standard, but not complete. And the average number of bites necessary if greater than one is essentially the same between the two. But after looking at what were thought to be single bite successes, the actual histologic eradication rate was somewhere between 77 and 82 percent, which seems quite shy of the goal line of complete removal of all polypoid tissue. So how does a cold snare fare up to the cold forceps we just saw? In this meta-analysis published in Surgical Endoscopy in 2018, we see four only randomized controlled trials to date 
looking both at cold forceps in comparison to the cold snare. And on the right hand side, you can see in terms of complete histological eradication that the cold snare favors better than the forceps in terms of polypectomy. And this intuitively makes sense. Here we see a very small polyp uh, that we are attempting to take by cold forceps biopsy. After our first removal, you can see there's a little bit of tissue there on the superior side, so we go back in to take the rest of it. And hopefully we've got it all this time. We clean it off a little bit with some saline, get the bleeding to stop, and it seems pretty satisfactory at this moment. Here we see an approximately five millimeter polyp in the right colon. With the cold snare, you try to position the base of the catheter a couple millimeters uh, from the bottom of the polyp to encompass normal mucosa in part of your sample, uh, both to accomplish completion of resection as well as for comparison for the pathologist under the microscope. So we've covered standard forceps, jumbled forceps, and cold snare polypectomy. So let's compare a hot snare to the cold snare. There have been a number of studies comparing hot and cold snares, but the most recent was a Crescent study. It's a randomized controlled trial of 12 centers in Japan, looking at close to 800 polyps. And the complete resection rate was essentially the same in both. And thus the cold snare was deemed not inferior to the hot snare, though there were two post-operative bleeding episodes in the hot snare group. And looking at this recent meta-analysis of cold versus hot snare, we see there is a slight increase in delayed bleeding events for the hot snare as compared to the cold snare group in all randomized studies published to date. Now, brief mention on dedicated cold snare versus the traditional cold snare. The dedicated cold snares have a somewhat thinner wire um, and a different shape than the standard cold snare. And including these two randomized controlled trials, there may be a slight advantage for a dedicated cold snare in terms of complete histologic eradication. Though it should be noted that if a larger polyp is found later on in the colonoscopy, a separate hot snare may need to be used, and thus there's maybe some significant cost savings involved using a traditional cold snare. Now, when using the cold snare, you may occasionally see protruding tissue in the center of the resection bed. This group out of Australia looked at 162 polyps that were all less than a centimeter. Of this, only 14% had this protruding tissue. And this was more likely for polyps that were greater than six millimeters and pathologically had no adenomatous or serrated polyp tissue and was mostly made up of submucosa and muscularis mucosa. In light of this evidence, the U.S. Multi-Society Task Force guidelines published in February of this year recommends cold snare polypectomy for both diminutive as well as small polyps that are less than nine millimeters. And to consider a dedicated cold snare in these settings, though they leave a little wiggle room for lesions that are two millimeters or smaller that are in technically difficult positions to use a forceps polypectomy technique. In terms of non panunculated polyps that are greater than 10 millimeters, please stay tuned for the next talk with Dr. Dumont, where he'll discuss EMR and ESD techniques. Moving on to larger pedunculated polyps, this is a randomized study looking at prophylactic clip placement at the base of a pedunculated stock versus no clip prior to hot snare polypectomy. And they found a significant increase in the amount of immediate bleeding 
in the polyps that did not have a prophylactic clip placed. In another study, they looked at prophylactic clip placement versus endo loop placement for bleeding control prior to hot snare polypectomy in uh, a little over 200 polyps with either a head greater than one centimeter or a stalk greater than five millimeters. And this was essentially the same for both early bleeding events as well as delayed bleeding events with the major contributor for post-polymectomy bleeding being a stalk size greater than 10 millimeters in this particular study. Thus, the U.S. Multi-Society guidelines recommend a hot snare polypectomy for all pedunculated polyps and prophylactic clip or endo loop placement for all pedunculated polyps with a head size greater than 20 millimeters or a stock thickness greater than or equal to 5 millimeters prior to hot snare polypectomy. To recap, there has been significant variability in endoscopic reception to date between endoscopists. In terms of the small polyps, a cold snare is favored over a hot snare for mainly bleeding risks but not uh, resection risks and the use of cold or hot forceps is inadequate for most polyps that are greater than two millimeters in size and to prevent bleeding in larger pedunculated polyps it's recommended to place prophylactic clips or uh, detachable endo loops for larger polyps and stalks but if you happen to remember nothing else from this talk if you see a polyp small like this, don't reach for those cold forceps. Go for that cold snare instead. Thank you very much.